My name is Grace Mbwete, and this lecture is based on the introduction to database system. First, we need to learn about definition of a database. What is a database? Is it a collection of files or a collection of records? A database can be simply defined as collection of organized data which can be easily accessed, managed, updated by a computer program. In the database management system, this is a special software that is used to manage and query a database. So what are the properties of databases? Sharing of data is the first one. The second one is ability to have more than one user, a multi-user system. A database also supports multiple view of data. That means the same data can be viewed by many users at the same time. Also, database, databases control data redundancy. It also ensures integrity constraints. There's also data independence within databases. Also, there's a security for authorized and unauthorized access. Databases also provide insulation between program and data. Another property of databases is transaction processing and finally, backup and recovery facilities in case of any problem. So what are the functions of databases? Why do we have databases? Why do you need a database in your organization? First is to organize and store data or information so that it can be used by that particular organization. Another function is to provide facilitation for analysis and modeling of data. Another function for databases is to process given data and turn it into information because you can have data but it might not be as readable or user-friendly to users until it's processed and become information. And finally, databases are there to support general activities for an organization. So let us see examples of databases usage and environment. This pane that we are seeing here is a human resources information system which has a database within it that is used to store data about employees of that particular organization. You can see details of an employee's name, face name, salary, and things like that. Another example is a school management information system whereby this system must have a database that stores information about students, examinations, timetable, and uh, general management of that uh, particular school. Also, we can see a flight reservation system. This is a system which is used by either a travel agent or a passenger himself or herself to book a flight. You can see their flight details, their names of a passenger, and the status of uh, that particular flight. Also, we can, as we can see, this is a library information system which must have a database that stores information about books and the availability of books, whereby a user can do different things within the system, but with the support of a database. Now, we know the definition of a database. Let us see what kind of users are involved within a database management system. First of all, we have application user. This is an end user who is not sophisticated or is not technical that uses the existing application program to perform their daily task by using that database. Another user is application programmer. This is a, a technical user whose function is to implement specific application program that will be used to access the, the database. Another user is a database administrator. This could be a, a, an individual or a group of people who are responsible for authorizing access, monitoring the use, and managing all the resources that support the use of a database system. Now, let us learn on how to classify database management system. The first way of classifying database is by using a data model. You, 
for example, you can have a network database or hierarchical database or relational database. Relational databases are the most popular one used today. Another way of classifying a database management system is by using a number of users. You can have a single user database management system or multiple users database management system. Another way of classifying uh, databases is the way the database is distributed. That means it's either a centralized database, that means it's situated in one place or in one office, or a database that is distributed. Another way of classifying a database management system is by a license. It's either an open source database or a proprietary database. Finally, you can classify a database, whether it's a generic database or a special purpose database. This is the end of part one, where we were introduced to database system. And now we're going to part two, where we're going to learn the system that were being used before the advent of databases. File-based system were being used before the advent of databases. As you can see in the diagram, you have several departments within a bank. You have accounts department, you have human resources department, and you have a loans department. And uh, in the diagram, there are files, file system, which are being used by that, uh, by that particular bank or by different organization. But the, the issue is the information that is being stored by one department is also stored in another department without being related or without being shared within the same organization. That's how they, they, they were being used in different organizations. The file-based system would go hand in hand with that particular with a particular application program. That means if you have uh, files within accounts department, you need to access those files with a specific application program. And for a loans department, they have their own file-based system and they have a specific application program that will be used to access their files in that loans department without relating to another department. So, as you can see, there are many problems and limitations of file-based system. The first problem was data redundancy. There was a repetition. From previous example, the information that's stored about a customer, a customer having an account in accounts department, but the same customer can have a, a loan in, from loan uh, department. But that information is not shared, is not related. So the loan department would store their own information and the accounts department will store their own information. But if this is the same customer. So data redundancy, which would mean repetition of data and would also occupy space within the system. And uh, another problem with uh, file-based uh, file uh, system, it was data isolation. Each data will be isolated in its own place. It's not shared, it's not related. And also, there was a lack of data integrity. And another problem is security. There were no security mechanisms within file-based system. And finally, uh, file-based system did not allow concurrent access. You can have data, but one user can access that data at one time in order to allow update and uh, co in having a correct version of that particular file. This is end of our lecture. Thank you very much for watching.